Good morning, fellow Christians. This is BCLO, the round table. Turn your set on if you don't have it. Listen to see what the gospel's got to say for y'all. I turn this mic over to Brother Dan. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> well, good morning, everybody. And it's a fine morning indeed. It's the day of the Lord. And that's all that matters because it is his day every day. And we do have our roundtable guests. We have uh, Pastor Larry Bradford. We have Brother John Clark and Pastor Alfredo Medina. And we're just going to be talking about what God's laying on our hearts today. So, gentlemen, how are we doing? Good morning. Doing good. Amen. Amen. Doing very good. <clears throat> Looking forward to a great service today. Looking for God to just show up, work in us and through us today. Yep. I had a, <clears throat> for those that don't know, we had a, a, a youth rally uh, at one of our neighboring churches in Orville, and man, we had such a good time. Yes, amen. Friday night, their worship was insane. I got absolutely wrecked. It was great. I, I, I definitely used my share of Kleenexes that evening. I think we had probably around at least 20 that made a commitment to the Lord Friday night at the youth rally. And a lot of them were young, young children, which I was just so blessed. And the altar service was great. Everybody that was a part of it did, did a wonderful job. Proud of our kids that won a few trophies and items in the uh, competition talent department during the day. Was, did a great job there, Pastor Freddie working over there, doing his part, setting them on fire when he opened up service. Did a great job. Yep. Amen. We are, we are blessed. We're blessed. Amen. Well, let's open with prayer then. Yes, sir. Lord, we love you today. We're so blessed. Every day, Lord, every day, Lord, draws us closer, one day closer to your return. We still believe, Lord, you are coming again don't know Lord if it's in our lifetime we want to be ready that you would prepare our hearts God set our hearts aright set our minds Lord upon you God and uh, we thank you Lord and if you tarry Lord another day another year another hundred years everything we do Lord will still make a difference in eternity we put our trust in you today Lord and if there's anyone today Lord that doesn't know you that may just uh, be listening to anything we share I pray Holy Spirit that you would just speak into their hearts new life today remind them how much you love them Lord and, and just bless them today Lord and for those that already know you may their relationship be enriched by what they may hear today God Lord there is never a time where we need to stop learning never a time to cease from growing we just bless you and we bless our services throughout our community we bless you today, Lord, and we thank you for all this. In your name, Jesus, amen. 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 <clears throat> I think I'll open up with something here. The Holy Spirit was speaking to me last night about choices. Choices. He brought that word choices because of a situation that I was going through last night my neighbors and I won't go into detail with that but uh, we all have choices <coughs> to make every day yes we do the moment you wake up your mind begins to work already on, uh, on making choices for the day and so I think I read somewhere where it's been a while back it was, I think it was like Three to thirty-five hundred times per day, we our mind is working, developing, and creating, or making decisions on choices a day. No doubt. And I mean, to me, that makes a lot of sense because even the moment you wake up, 
you have a choice to say, good morning, Lord, or I'm sleepy, and you're making choices. I'm going to church this morning, or I'm not going to church this morning. Mm -hmm. I'm still mad from yesterday, and I'm still angry, I'm not gonna forget. It's just choices we have in life. Constant, constantly we make choices. And, uh, too many times we as humans, we make the wrong choices. We're always making the wrong choices. You ever, you guys ever get caught up on that? Oh yes. Come on. Oh yeah. yeah. Absolutely. You want to do the right thing, Guilty. but you, we choose the wrong way. There you go. And so God's way is, is so clear to us. And, and Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18. It tells us that God's people perish because of our lack of understanding. Mm -hmm. In the King James Version, it, it, it states like so. Where there is no vision, yeah, the, people the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. In my new King James Bible, it's, it reads, where there's no revelation, the people cast off restraint. Okay. But happy is he who keeps the law. <clears throat> and so, I, I read that this morning after last night's little struggles, and, and I realized that God <coughs> has not only purpose for us, so that we can overcome choices, but vision. Vision, sure. And without a vision out there, you're gonna make the wrong choices. Yeah. The vision is what God gives us. And I just wanna encourage all those that are out there are hearing this morning that you have a choice to make today. And I don't know what your choice may be, but I know that if you seek God the moment you make that, that first that first awakening. Yeah. I mean, when I wake up, I always, good morning, Holy Spirit, good morning, Lord. And then I kind of struggle along, you know, <laughs> trying to find the place, trying to find uh, a coffee that kitchen pot. corner where I can find my coffee. And, <laughs> and I'm making choices already. Yeah, no. <laughs> I need that coffee, okay. <laughs> okay, I need to see what's going on in Ukraine. Sure. These are choices that concern me. And it ought to concern us as much as it concerns God to tap into what's God's vision for our lives. Be concerned about what's going on around your surroundings, what's affecting us possibly in the future. And remember, I think it's some 3,500 times per day you're making choices. This morning, I just wanna encourage all the hearers out there that that you would get up, and I posted something on, on Facebook. Don't forget, time changed one hour ahead. Mm -hmm. I'll see you at church. That's your choice. That's your choice. Yeah. But if you want to get blessed, as much as I know you are already by hearing what's going around the round table, come and get some more. Amen. Amen? Amen. Yeah. yeah. I love what you said about uh, choices uh, and everything that we make. And what really got me at this youth thing, youth thing, there was a lyric in a song that was sung, and I don't <clears throat> remember the lyric, but it was like, how I love to waste my time on God. And I'm like, oh, that's good. <laughs> how yeah. do you waste your time on God? But what better way <laughs> but to waste your time on God? Because so many times in our daily lives, <clears throat> Some people, first thing they do when they wake up, they go straight to Facebook. Yeah. You know, they go straight to something else. And there's this thing on everyone's phone, and I'd challenge people to go and look at your screen time. Mm -hmm. Screen time tells you how much you use your phone during a day, during mm -hmm. a week, what apps you use, mm -hmm. and, and how often. <coughs> I was watching some video on it because God was just telling me about this waste of time. There's kids that spend 14 hours a day <coughs> on their phone. It's like, how is that possible? And then it goes into, t and so I thought, Breaks man, if down. I could waste my time on God, because <clears throat> I think one of my phobias or addictions is YouTube. Because while I'm working on my computer, I've got some Ukraine thing running on the sidelines, some newsreel doing this. 
and all I'm doing is polluting my mind with negativity, with bias, with, you know, anger because of what's going on and, you know, and no one's got the right story. Things are happening and yeah. I just want to know, but you know what? I could be dialed into the Christian satellite network and listening to some Adrian Rogers or some David Jeremiah and pumping myself full of that positivity and building myself up, but I'm not doing that. So, you know, that's just a choice that I have. Or when I'm mowing my lawn and I've got my earbuds in, I could be listening to some scripture or some just gospel music instead of listening to my, my Yacht Rocks PlayStation because they're some good old 70s songs. But, you know, it's like what choices am I going to make to further myself in the kingdom? Yeah. And how far in the kingdom am I going to go? Am I, I have no one to be mad at by myself if I have nothing to offer because of my choices not to be in his word and surround myself yeah. with, you know, we, that. Choices connected with habits, yep. at least in, oh, yeah. in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Goes hand in hand. They go hand in hand. Uh, and it's been said that <clears throat> in order to break a habit, and it does not, not necessarily not referring here to maybe not something sinful, but just... <clears throat> Just something like what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, back in the day before they had the phones, you know, the, the young young boy, young girl threw the newspaper on the front porch, and it was no different than it is now. You still grab the <coughs> newspaper and started going over the events of the day, and you you know spend an hour or two hours, and and uh, it's been said not, and that's not wrong, but it. Shifting for priority may be important, which it is. So the change of habits been said takes takes a consistency of about 21 days. Right. Well, that's tough, and you know uh, whether it's a physical need for change or whether it's emotional, mental, spiritual, financial change. 21 days can be can be brutal because we live in a time where we just kind of want everything done now, change now. We you know want it up now and I think that's why we're so intrigued with what we see online is it just it's the information's available 24 7 mm -hmm. uh, but to change a habit even just to get up in the morning to say good morning Lord every day for 21 days do that don't don't grab your phone unless it's an emergency call you know you say well but I'm a doctor I need my phone I said I can hear that you know I see that but you need God more than we need doctors. That's right. Think about it. Yes. Because if it wasn't for, if God wanted to, every doctor in this country would be out of business by noontime. Come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hello. Well, my appointment. You're not as important as you really think you are. My schedule just all of a sudden yeah. is open. Yeah. I mean, if every soul in America gave their heart to the Lord, the only one that would be out of a bad job is those that are Christian people because we're going to have to amp up the responsibilities to teach and love and train and minister but that's then right. again everybody would be involved in that so you say well that's an extreme well it may be but my point is this e anybody no matter how busy they are or how involved they are in life can change a habit right and of course we encourage you if you need to make better choices take it to the Lord yeah, absolutely just tell your father what in the world's going on here absolutely yeah Amen. choices is what we want a lot of times, there choices you go. that we want, and that Bible verse that I just read out of Proverbs, is we make the choices. We're a, we're a want people. I want this. I need this, and I gotta have <laughs> yeah. this. And, and really, you want that, but you don't need it. But you need it because you want it. And I gotta have it because it's a choice. Yeah. And when we line it up with God's, you know, becoming a Christian. It doesn't doesn't just happen overnight. The first stage is, yeah, you made a choice to ask Jesus in your life, but then the vision of God is is for you to allow God to envision you and direct in your path where it's going to be a lifestyle. That's right. It's going to be a long walk with God, and too many people get discouraged because they make the wrong choices, and they're either... Uh, mad at God or mad at Dan or mad at me or mad at the pastor or, mm -hmm. or, or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. They mad made the their own choice, yeah. but they didn't stay faithful to yeah. God's vision. And so uh, the, they, uh, they don't grow in the Lord. 
they don't flourish, they don't become, they, they don't take the steps with God to become what God wants them to become. Choices. This morning, I think that, that, that word is just, it's heavy on my mind. Uh, choices, yeah. Make the right choice. And it is our choice. I mean, it's our, it's God bless us with the will. Uh, yeah. You know, to make the right one. <laughs> yeah. Two months ago when I shared with the men's group things and choices that we shouldn't be making. <clears throat> yeah. And I, I promise that ever since, you know, God spoke to me, I've, I've totally changed decisions. I've totally eliminated uh, what would be daily norms by going to God with temptations and just living a freer life. Amen. And with such more of a clearer mindset yeah. and daily living because I'm not entertaining things or myself the way I would have. Sure. So, you know, I, I know surrounding myself and keeping myself exactly will, will change those habits. And you know, when we allow the Lord to help us make choices and, uh, that better our lives and better our relationship with Him and people around us, other people notice that too. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, this morning, Sister Ann and I, we had our devotion time and, and it talked about the book of Colossians, put on bowels of mercy, kindness, mm -hmm. forgiving one another, loving one another. All the things that we really don't want to do. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> really. That but takes work, Pastor. Yeah, that's my point. It takes choice. That's right. <clears throat> you, know, for, if, you know, it's not easy if someone, you know, does something that just, just irritates you, as we've heard of. Yes. And it's not easy to say, Lord, you're just going to have to work that out and bless them. That's the choice. We have mm -hmm. that choice. We can, allow, we can allow the world to rub us the wrong way, or we can ask the Lord to help us to rub them the right way. There you yeah. go. Yes. And I admit, I don't always, I don't always get it right. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. But I, I know God loves us, and he's there for us to help us to make those changes that need to be made. And, Amen. And, and, and sometimes we're looking to try to make choices and changes that are huge. Okay, but typically we're not very good at making huge changes and choices. I believe it needs to be one kind word at a time. One, yes. you know, I listen to I listen to Brother John here talking to his wife, and the last thing they said on the phone is "I love you." That's a choice. Yeah, huh, Brother John? Absolutely. To love is a choice. To do the things that we, you know, and, and that requires, sometimes that requires just simply putting it out there. Mm -hmm. and, and, and because it's, we know it's, as we grow, we know it's the right thing to do, you know. Mm -hmm. and so it doesn't have to be something huge. Just start with, I've got a book called Seismic Changes. Seismic is a word that means intricate, detailed changes, small things. Say, well, Pastor, how much Bible do you read a day? Well, that, the Bible is my world. I'm a pastor. That's my priority. Other than a little fishing every now and then. But reading, <laughs> reading the Word is my priority. Yes. Number one for me. It, it has, and it should be for all of us, but by the nature of my work that we do here, people need to hear something from the Word of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. God have mercy more than they could ever learn from me. And mm. so it, it takes time to develop that. So if, if I, you know, I may get up and read for an hour, two hours, three hours, four hours a day, reading, studying, and doing those different things. But you say, well, I can never do that. Well, that's not the point. The point is you can start. You can change. You can make a choice to get up. Start with one chapter, two or three verses. But for Pete's sake, don't do nothing. Mm -hmm. You'll die out. Yeah. You'll die out. That's what pastors... Fred referring to about seeing a vision, mm -hmm. envisioning spending time with the Lord, envision oh, yeah. having that fellowship, envision Him changing your spirit, your attitude, your mindset. Mm -hmm. He will. Because I'm telling you what, we, and I know most of us know this, we may not believe it, but the devil's up a long time before you are. Yeah, he is. 
try to keep me up all that night. Yes, that sir. Night. Yeah, if he can't keep you up all <laughs> yeah. And so he's always, he, if he had his will, he would keep all of us from making divine appointments with God. Yeah, right. That makes me think of that thing with, with Pastor preached on, uh, if the devil's over there bugging him, that's good because he's, he's not, not on not my bothering back. me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, I, I probably admit, Lord, well, send him over there, and bother Brother Fred today. He's, he got more faith this morning than I do. Let him, let him have at it, you know, boy. Yeah, but changes are possible. I heard a lot of a lot of uh, comments being made that people were going to lose an hour of sleep last night. Uh, it was going to be difficult for them to get to church. And I tell you what, I woke up this morning, and uh, even after the torment that I went through the night at 6 o'clock which I still didn't change the time, it was already 7 I go, oh gosh, I gotta get to the round table here quick I ain't cleaned up or I ain't done nothing yet so I got busy doing that but, you know um, this is this is how God works I'm just gonna lay it out there so you'll know, maybe somebody will know my, my wonderful neighbor they like to stay up late on Saturday yeah. nights yeah. Not, not, not as often as they used to because I had a couple of talks with them. I think the next talk I'm going to have is with their parents. <laughs> right. I already tried the boy. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, go to the you know, I knew time was going to change an hour ahead. And they wake me up about 11.30 at night. And they're talking till about 1.30. I can't get to sleep. Well, I realized it was actually 2.30. I, I was I was upset. I was making wrong choices. I wanted to go out there and beat him in the head and take my bat with him because I've already talked to him about me going to church and I got I got to get my sleep. And so time already changed and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, you blind devil. So what I did next was was what we need to do and follow in God's direction. Yeah, I prayed. Just prayed. Just prayed and opened up the Word. Sure. And when, when we make the right choices, God will take care of the problems. Yeah, he will. Immediately, yeah. I'm thinking five, ten minutes later, Brother John, I heard the trucks, their trucks starting, their vehicle, they started their vehicle, you can hear it. And I'm, I praise the Lord, they're gone. <laughs> praise the Lord. I opened up the window a little bit, and I was like, get some fresh air. <laughs> I didn't have to hear that racket until I was asleep, just quick. <laughs> don't, don't, don't let the devil distract you. Amen. Don't let them distract Amen. you. Just stay, stay faithful. Come to church. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there's certainly your life has got to be. I mean, we all miss time change and, and like, but I kind of like the time change because it gives me more time to fish on the back end. Me too. You just, know? It's just the first yeah, day. That's the first. The first the well, first. actually, it's about the first month with me. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. going to be yard work for me now that we got the. Uh, uh, yeah. Now that we've got the. Um, the longer weather, you know, yeah. now you're not Put in some working in the dark at 5.30. Yeah. Now we can work until 9.30. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Choices. Yeah. I know it. Yeah. Choices. Yeah. I think there's two places in Scripture that come to mind when you think about choices was the, the battle between the false prophets of Baal and the, uh, you know, the true God, uh, Jehovah, with Elijah on Mount Carmel. Oh, yeah. You know, and he told the people, he said, how long do you halt? Or do you struggle between two opinions? If God is God, serve Him. Yeah. It's you know I know He didn't know these terms, but He was telling the people it's not rocket science. That's right. But if Baal's Baal, if you think He's He won't serve false gods, well that's what you're going to do. Yeah. You know. Uh, and then you have uh, Joshua, and He told the people in Joshua chapter 24 before He passed off into glory, He told the people He said, "As for me," and He said, "Make a choice." You're either going to serve all the gods on this side of Jordan, other side of Jordan, or you're That's going to right. serve God on this side. The God that, the God that blessed you, the God that gave you that work, the God that gave you the finances to pay that bill when you didn't know where it was going to come from. You yeah. said, "Well, I don't know the Lord." So, well, listen, He knows you, because if He doesn't know us in our state of, 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 of sinfulness and, and, and unholiness and not living right with God, if He doesn't know us, you're going to you're going to be lost through all eternity. All of us would be. Yeah. So, so when it gets right down to it, any choice we make, any decision that we make that leads us to Him, it's because He moved us to do that. That's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So He told the people, He said, you know, either you're going to serve the gods on that side. He said, 
Or are you going to serve the Lord God that took care of you and put you where you're at and helped you and blessed you and Amen. guides you and loves you and cares for you, forgives you when you mess up, fixes all your mess ups. And I mean, the list goes on to what oh, God yeah. does for us. It does. He said, but for his, me and my house, oh Lord, he said, I'm making a choice. It's for right. me and my house. I'm going to serve the Lord. Yeah. For the, I, we we have we've got we've got single moms that bring their children here, and they are to be greatly praised. We've got single dads that bring their children, or they come when they can, and they are to be greatly greatly to be honored and praised for that. Because yeah. that, you know, I, I, if I'm walking around a supermarket store, or I'm in I don't know Ross or wherever I'm going to get some stuff, and I look around, I see. I see this guy, he's toting a baby up here, and he's got three in the basket. I'm like, now, now that, that's a man. That, that guy's got something going on. Either that or something's not right. I don't know how you want to look at it. But then, and I see, I see the mom doing the same thing. I'm thinking, wow. Yeah. The energy and the time and the efforts. Because they care. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just, and, and I, I'm a little, I'm, yeah. I'm a people person, so. I'm the guy that walks up and, you know, and I usually have Sister Anna with me, and I look at him and say, i got to commend you. And usually they get this, like, you have no idea. So, well, I, you know, I don't go in. I, we raised three, that. but, yeah, I've been there and done some of that. But, but yeah. what I'm saying is the efforts and energy it takes yeah. for them to choose to get up, gather those children, gather those babies, pick them up from school, come down there and spend two hours. Come on. I'm telling you, she's got the hard job. He's got the easy job if he's out working somewhere, and vice versa. My point is this. How much greater does God want to gather us, pick us up, work with us, walk with us, mm -hmm. yeah. walk with us through the supermarket, say, there you need some grace. That's right. You need to pick yeah. up some of that mercy over there on shelf number five. Aisle five, we got a spill. <laughs> Go over and clean that thing up, and I'll be there to help you clean it up. Yeah. Choices. Ministry. That, Ministries. That I like what you just said. Sometimes we're at the stores and, and we got some cleaning up to do, and God will direct us to certain people. Too many times we make a choice not to speak to them, not to go up there and there, love on them. There's another choice. Yeah. And if we make that choice, and, and the Holy Spirit speaks to us, whether it's at the mall, at, at the store, grocery store, you'd be surprised what God has already been speaking to them. That's trying to get you to sure, move in and, and make a choice to help them. When, when we, uh, Jesus said this, he said, you, you have not chosen me, I have chosen you. That's right. Right. So the, as we have surrendered to the Lord, the longer and the more effective and beneficial that our, the Lord helps us with our choices to line up from a scriptural basis, to walk in holiness, to walk in righteousness, you say, well, how do I know when I'm growing? And I think, Pastor, you just hit it. One of the, way, one of the ways we know, Brother John, that we're growing is everything isn't now about us. Yeah. That's yeah. right. It's just not about us. We, we live in a lost, empty, hurting, broken world. Right. Because when we live a life of service, it's not about us. It's not about us, it's Brother about Dan. Others. And as we continue to grow and make better choices, the Lord will lead us to people that we can begin to reach out to. Yeah. That's where the witness comes. That, now, that's, that's, a, that's the other level of making choices. Now you get up in the morning and you're not just praying, God bless me. You're saying, God, can you help me be a blessing to somebody else? Help me be a bless somebody else. Help me, Lord, be a part of what they're... You say, well, coming to church and, and the giving that we do and the different things, are just it, it's, it's because it builds the godly character within us. We put our faith together. We grow together. Yeah. And then we take that to a world that we live in, whether it's on your job, whether you're retired or whether you're, 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 you're disabled, however it may be, God is going to put you in contact with somebody. That you can help them, and the wonderful thing about it, Peter said that, that God puts within us such a hope that people will come to you, and they'll ask you of the hope mm -hmm. yeah. that lies within you. Ann and I were yeah, talking this morning, and, and we what we read here in the book of Colossians. I said, you know, baby, you and I both know this that that after after a while, people begin to notice how we respond, and it's not when everything is doing really really super well typically it's when the rubber meets the road that mm -hmm. defines yeah. our uh, brother John that defines our Christian character at least it does for me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean I can praise him when the devil ain't bothering me a lot easier than I can when he is right yeah. you say well how long you've been at this well I've been in it for most of my life but I still read the same word you read grow in grace and in the knowledge that's where you get vision from his word 
and grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I still read that part where it says, be faithful. I got a choice. I still read those words that says, contend for the faith of the gospel that's been delivered unto you by Jude. I still read those action verbs that requires us to make with God's guidance choice. But, but, and I don't know if this is the right term, but it, it becomes such a blessing when you realize that you get up every day and the choices you make, they're never isolated. Most of the time they're not. They're gonna be affected by somebody. That reminds me of um, choices. It, does, it didn't start in the New Testament. God gave Adam and Eve a choice. That's right. Yes, he did. And he gave, even before Adam and Eve was even present in this world, uh, angels' choices. Yeah, that's right. It goes way and back. And when you fail God, like the angels failed him, they got cast out. And when Adam and Eve failed God, consequences of not making the right choices has affected the world. Yeah, they got kicked out of the garden. But we don't make the right choices as, as Christians, as ministers. It affects everybody it affects around, around us. us. Yes, I yeah. believe it. Everybody around us. So I, I've always, I've had this, this asked of me quite often. How do you know that Jesus chose you? How, how, did you, how do you know? You, well, you, you're telling me that he chose you. You didn't choose him. And a lot of people get that confused. And I said, I always tell them, you know what? It, it all comes down to John 3.16. The love of God is so great that in our wrong choices, he sent his only son. That's right. That's right, Pastor. His only begotten son. Yes, he has. And Jesus made a choice to come. Oh, and, yes, and, he and that choice we all know. And for those of you that are hearing me this morning, we need to get out of the habit of just going to church on Easter. Yeah. Christmas. Or our weddings. Yeah. Yes. Or quinceañeras. Yeah. Time for change. It's time for change, yeah. and the change only comes when you make, make the, the right, right choice. choice. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Our church is growing. We are. We are. We are experiencing revival in our church. Yes, we are. Amen. We are having people, new people coming in, and and we're getting ready to go in revival here. Mm -hmm. But it's already happening, and so. I want to encourage you that that um, those that are struggling, God loves you. He uh, made a plan for us Amen. from Genesis and even from before, and He put it together. And if you read the Scriptures, get into the Word, read it, you'll be set free, and Amen. you'll begin to make the right choice. You ain't gonna be perfect. You're, you're never gonna be perfect. Not in this world. You're gonna have some trials because that devil that's in that corner harassing somebody else while we're like, yeah, he's not on me right now. Well, guess what? Your yeah, turn's coming up. Yeah, he'll make his rounds. He always but if he right. comes at you and you resist him, there it is. and you, you stand firm in the word and and you make the right choice, he has to flee. Amen. He's gone. So make the right choice this morning and, and come and be with us here at Victory Chapel. Come. Come be Amen. part of our service. Come hear a word of what is it, the dry bones? Yeah, OE dry, dry bones, oh, part two. Okay. Part two, because he couldn't even finish. He didn't, pa didn't. Pastor didn't even know he was no. going into a part two. No. He just couldn't preach what he had last week because it was so Spirit it was so anointing, the service, so powerful that he has to take us into part two. If you miss part one, VCLO will get you to that website where you can hear Pastor on, on the first uh, sequence of it, Yeah. come to church this morning. I guarantee you, you will make the right choice by doing so. Amen. 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 Amen.